Good, good. So thank you very much for coming. I didn't expect there to be this many people, so bear with my nerves. I'm just adjusting. I'm adjusting. So e-learning, web developer, or authoring tool. So we're going to start with me. Um, so I've worked in web technologies for 14 years across multiple industries. I'm a consultant for hardware, software, procurement, UI design, and I co-founded a company in, in 2014. Now we're going to have to deal with that straight up. There is an elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is that I own a company that has a content authoring tool. Keep going. So, uh, so I'm slightly biased. I'll try and keep the bias out of the talk until the end, but I just want to deal with that up front so you know what's coming. So we'll just talk about Evolve Authoring and I'm going to be really conscious of not demoing my product because a lot of these are just sales demos. That isn't this talk. The purpose is to really kind of debate the authoring tool versus developer. So it's a product used by freelancers, great for repeatable high-end e-learning, inexpensive and allows for basic advanced usage and you don't have to type a line of code. So that's what an authoring tool and my authoring tool does. Um, it does what it does, it's not for everyone. Little note from marketing at the top there. So the, the idea really is that um, I'm, I'm gonna be very different to other suppliers and say that the, the tool isn't for every purpose. And that's why we're having this debate about using an e-learning developer. So we're obviously gonna look at a brief history of e-learning development, the benefits and disadvantages of the approach, some examples, the way forward, and some questions at the end. Let's get some disclaimers out of the way. So, um, not everyone creates bad e-learning. Uh, the products out there, a lot of people are quite happy with them. So when we talk about um, e-learning and everything else, and, and I talk about and show examples of necessarily bad e-learning, a lot of people are quite happy with that and it works for their organisation. There's obviously a lot of salespeople out there that over-exaggerate features, which is why people tend to just use a developer because they get a bit fed up with the, the sales pattern, the product not delivering. And developers are needed and valued. So when I'm going through some of the bad points of using an e-learning developer, I want you to know that you know, we do value them. I employ developers, they're a needed resource. Um, we always talk about the best approach rather than, um, even if it means not using our product. So there are things that authoring tools can't do and I still haven't worked out how to spell e-learning. So there's going to be multiple capital L's, capital E's, I just can't work out how to spell it. So you'll see variants of that, and if, if you're particular on grammar, this is going to annoy you. So, if we look at... Welcome to this incredibly loud e-learning module. We're going to cover things in very slow pace and very loud audio that you can't mute, and it's playing in front of your entire office. Oh my goodness, we can't stop this audio. How do we stop it? This isn't annoying at all. Welcome to this incredibly loud e-learning module. We're going to cover things in very slow pace and very loud audio that you can't mute and it's playing in front of your entire office. Oh my goodness, we can't stop this audio. How do we stop it? This isn't annoying at all. Welcome to this incredibly loud e-learning module. We're going to cover things in very slow pace and very loud audio that you can't mute and it's playing in front of your entire office. Oh my goodness, we can't stop this audio. How do we stop it? This isn't annoying at all. So, Welcome to this incredibly loud e-learning module. We're going to cover things in very slow pace and very loud audio that you can't mute and it's playing in front of your entire office. Oh my goodness, we can't stop this audio. How do we stop it? This isn't annoying at all. Welcome to this incredibly loud e-learning module. We're going to cover things in very slow pace and very loud audio that you can't mute and it's playing in front of your entire office. Oh my goodness, we can't stop this audio. How do we stop it? This isn't annoying at all. There you go. So, some things have improved, some things have stayed the same. Some tools are more in line with web technologies. Old habits are hard to break because if you give a, a e-learning designer, a lot of the time you give them a authoring tool, they come out with content like you've just seen. And there's a, sort of an equal split between developers and non-developers using authoring tools. If I, Basically, we're going to look at a comparison of um, good versus not so good, a hybrid solution and the frustrations. So what we're going to do is we're going to step through a use case um, about what an e-learning project might consist of. So it should be accessible, it should be multi-device, should be um, work across all browsers. It should be multi-language. Uh, updates are required to the content and it's perfectly on brand and there's a hundred courses that you've got to create. So would you use a developer or an authoring tool for this? 
we step through it. Often the process involves a content review. Um, there's often uh, the design process that's external. It won't involve a developer. It's more like this is how we want the e-learning course to go. And there's often a lot with the spec and content. So is this right? Is that right? It goes a lot of back and forth. When you actually build and you're building the content, there's a lot of questions in the process. And then you've got to review it and you've got to test. And then finally you sign off and go live. That can be anything from a couple of months to nearly a year in terms of depending on how many courses. And if we're doing 100 courses, there's a lot to get through. So if we look at a web developer and where they come in, they have experience of the outside world. They can develop clean and beautiful sites. It incorporates accessible mobile first thinking and attitude because obviously your website needs to be available to all. And it saves us from ourselves to, to get rid of some of that e-learning, which can be often audio playing over the top, which is what you heard earlier. Um, and, and things that you just wouldn't find on the internet. If you think about e-learning, there's a lot of e-learning. You start the e-learning course, audio starts playing. Who, who likes that happening on a website when it's really embarrassing, you're on a train and something starts playing? Nobody likes that. So it's that sort of thing. But if um, we look at e-learning and web developer applied, they're often quite expensive. They get frustrated. You, you end up with a, like a corporate that might need IE11, IE9, or, or IE8 even, and it can get quite annoying. Um, it can be slower than actually using an e-learning tool. Uh, lots of manual work. The actual so often the uh, and I might be wrong in some cases, but an e-learning developer will have to do the content as well as the actual developing the website. And then there's manual updates. So you would have started a new project, you're working on that, and then suddenly GDPR comes in, and you've got, I say suddenly it was there for ages, but suddenly GDPR comes in, and you've got to update all of your content, but you've got to find the same developer that's also working on new stuff. So it can be quite prohibitive. And then there's a steep curve of e-learning. So when I entered the industry um, four years ago, I had no idea about the terminology people used in e-learning, let alone L&D. So I was thinking, oh, um, this is a, a really good um, uh, video. I said, oh, no, that's media. So well, what's media? Is it, is it a video? What, what, no, no, it's just a video, but we call it media. Whoever does that, whoever says, oh, thanks for the media you sent me on YouTube. That was really good. Oh, and uh, did you see the graphic I took with my iPhone? Nobody says that. But so getting, um, getting into that um, e-learning terminology can be quite frustrating for someone that's been dealing with the rest of the web. So for example, sliders on a website that are like carousels, we call them narratives. So, but we tried to get away from some of that terminology, but it just confused people. So we stick with that. So normally with a web developer, you, you need that um, sort of knowledge of accessibility. You've got to manage people and timelines and everything else like that. They've got to develop on IE8. Uh, we don't use IE8 or IE9 in our authoring tool. We, we're IE11 minimum, purely because a lot of my developers said, if, if you carry on this course, we will leave your company. So it's that sort of thing. You, you, you've got to manage it. And um, ov obviously, if you're doing multilingual, it is just a copy. You change the language. And um, obviously, multiple courses, multiple languages. You've got 100 courses, and you're, you're doing all of that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time. And obviously, any update is going to be delayed with other work. So the thing is, with a web developer, when you look at the good stuff, the design's always going to be spot on. If you've got a good web developer and you've got a spec and a design, they're going to do it exactly as per the design. The, the efficiency is usually in, in, in terms of there of, of content and load time. So a, a website normally works quickly. That's the idea of a website. Often in e-learning, that isn't the idea of e-learning. It's, it's to get the learning across. But it can be really slow to load and quite clunky. Using a web developer will stop that. And, and it looks and feels like a good website because they've applied all that thinking um, in, in what they do in websites into e-learning. With an authoring tool, um, so it should work on most devices, but legacy is not supported in modern tools. There are, the thing is, you've got to use the right tool. So if you're a bank and you use IE8 or even IE6, as I've seen recently, use something like Articulate. If you want bleeding edge stuff, then you could use something like Gomo or Evolve Authoring. So it's that sort of thing. Um, accessibility is here in some tools on its way for others. It's, it's a growing thing. In any RFP that I've seen recently, accessibility double A standard is there. Everyone has to have it. So, but there's always or often multi-language support. It's becoming more popular, that people need it. So you can maintain multiple languages of the same course quite effectively. There's a review process built into the tool. So a bit like Google Docs, you can go and work on that together. And then it's the quick build, duplicate the course, change, change the content, you can do all of that. And it's ongoing browser support. So if Chrome do something like stop audio playing, um, or they stop videos playing automatically, which you would have seen on certain websites where it's automatically muted, how do you update that very quickly with your content? So your content's broken, you need to update it quickly. That's where an authoring tool comes in. 
The thing is, with an authoring tool and content, if you would have seen like those website generators in the early days, you can end up with a lot of bloat. Um, it might not feel like a, a good website. Things might take a longer time to load. The cost can spiral and licenses with authoring tools. People get set up fees. You might have expensive licenses. Or in some recent authoring tools, I've seen they start charging per user of the content. So if I've, if I've got 30,000 users, I'm suddenly paying a pound per user. That's a lot of money from a, a, a license that would have normally traditionally cost me a few hundred pounds a year. And then the design it sometimes isn't there. With, with something like Articulate, you can match the design perfectly, but in other tools, you can't. So, and the other thing is, if you want to design themes or you need a bit of help, often it just doesn't come out of the box. So you have to go back to the vendor, and they love it when you do that because they can earn more money. So you kind of you start with an authoring tool, think you might spend a bit of cash, you end up spending more than you intended to. So the thing is, I've seen authoring tools now that accommodate the developer. So you can, you can do all the bulk in the, in the authoring tool, but then you can insert JavaScript and your CSS, and you can add in that code to kind of complete the experience. And it can be really good, and you get that speed of production, you get the developer skill, um, and the design comes out just as you expected. The issue with that approach is that you end up with soup. Absolute soup in terms of your code. The developer leaves, someone's got to take that over, there's a bug, you can't find out whether it's the actual tool doing it or the code that you inserted in there. And, you know, in terms of when you go back to the vendor and say, hey, this isn't working, it's like, well, you've used your own code, you're on your own now. So you kind of start to see you lose some of the benefits of the tool. Um, likewise, you just got a browser update and your inserted code doesn't work with that browser. So you kind of, we need a bit more. Um, and, yeah, browser support can fail ongoing with your own code and snippets. So the summary is, is that Developers are great, you can get what you want. Tools are great for mass production, and a hybrid solution can work, but it's not long term. So where do you go with this? What, what can you do with this, and where do you, where do you get on going? The, the thing is, with using a, a developer, obviously it's, it's a person, it's a resource. You, you can kind of fine tune that. But how do you actually use them for what they intended to do? They don't want to be doing e-learning full time necessarily. They don't want to have to keep going back and updating content. So you can use them in the best way possible and on the tasks where they're really needed. So instead of using a developer for um, necessarily doing the standard e-learning courses, you might consider them using for a bit of R&D, some, something in um, I don't know, VR, AR, applying them where their actual skills can be used and where they can grow. And it's more valuable. You can use an authoring tool, ask difficult questions when you get hold of a supplier. So you can say, right, does it actually do this? Can I try it in my LMS? Will it work here? Can I match my brand? Can you show me? So asking those questions, don't be afraid. I think as British, we're quite polite. So we don't want to ask those difficult questions. So this, this can help with that. And in terms of learning and understanding it, you, you've got to really try the product out. So always go for a, a free product. The, the kind of um, the free trial, the, the warning signs for me, especially with LMSs and authoring tools, is where you have to actually contact somebody and you get a sales demo. And they're often, the, they're, they're often going to show you what they want you to see and not the stuff that you really want to know. So yeah, the warning sign is always be able to get a free trial, click it. That's how modern technology is going. That's how you, it works with Gmail, your social media. Why shouldn't it be an authoring tool? So you should probably expect a bit more or want a bit more from that supplier. Don't just get full just because it's e-learning and that's what everyone else does. Um, and then avoid that hybrid solution. Try not to insert code into the product. I know a lot of authoring tools allow it, but it's important not to do that and push your supplier to give you more out the tool. So in Evolve, I can use that as an example where people say, well, we need to theme, um, we need to match this brand. It's a very high-end design. Can you, um, can, you, can you basically allow me to put my code in? We'll say, well, no, we won't. Tell me what you need to do. Tell me the feature you need, and we'll put that in next month's release. So it's, it's about actually pushing your supplier to help you go further. It's that repeatable process. Because if I've got 100 courses, and I need to apply that same bit of code every 100 courses, you've lost the benefit of the tool. So in terms of, uh, I could do a quick demo or take some questions. It's up to you. Any questions on what I've said? Anything you don't agree with? Raise your hands. Oh, come on. It can't be that good. So <laughs> any, any, any things where you've seen, um, I guess, it not work with an authoring tool? Any, any, any questions around that? No? Okay. I'm, I don't want to give you a demo. I'm trying to resist giving you a demo of my product. 
So I guess really, I, I can show you some of the stuff that we've done. I'll close the slide and show you some of the content that we produce and that you should be pushing for your authoring tool. Likewise, I'd love you to use Evolve. I'd love you to come to Stand 28. But you also, if you're using a tool, you've developed content in there, you don't want to have to switch to a different tool. It's about pressing your supplier. So I guess come, and, come to Stand 28, have a conversation with us, sign up and have a play with Evolve, and ask us lots of questions. We're there to ask. You know, don't be polite. So I'll just, I'll just show you a bit of content that I couldn't show you earlier, if it will let me. So yeah, here's some stuff that we did with Snapchat. It's, it's a good reference point into that high-end design that you should be expecting. So in terms of how it functions, you can embed media, and uh, you can also use other things and different sliders and interactions with that. So this is the sort of thing that you should be doing with an authoring tool, and you should be able to do that, that high-end design and, and matching that brand exactly. So you can see there's multiple different things you can do, lots of flip cards. And, and when it comes to stuff like this, you might be thinking, can you really do that in an authoring tool? Can, can you really do that? And how do I make my stuff look as good as that? Surely they paid you some money. They didn't. So they managed to do it all themselves using the uh, video guides and stuff that we have. So obviously with their brand, it's nice. They use their own graphics. And our tool doesn't come with graphics. You have to design your own or images. Um, but all the text and all that design, that's stuff that they put in. And that's stuff that you can do. So but it, it really is, if, if, you, if you sit and you learn the tool and you work through it, there's no reason why you can't create content like that. So yeah, you can different, have different styles, so obviously you've got yellow backgrounds, white backgrounds, and these are what we call article styles, so you can reuse these and then obviously um, change uh, the, the look and feel as you need. So what I'll just show you is, is how we do it, because, just because I'll, I'm trying to avoid a quick demo, but I'll just show you the, the power of the tool and what you should expect. So, if we go out to here. So we'll start with a basic course. So, put that one there. Put that one there. And live preview. So it's this sort of thing where you can, I'll show you how you can apply your own themes and designs and that sort of thing. So if we build this out, I'll just add a bit of text in. Some text there. So what I'm doing here is, is as I'm actually building out the content, it's updating on the live preview. And then you can actually interact with that. So we can do A, for example, here. Say that A is the correct option. B there. And C there. And it's auto-saving as I go. So now I can actually come over here, interact with it, and get it correct. It's mobile responsive. It's accessible in terms of tabbing and any instructions that I put on the page. Now with this, imagine I've done this course. I now need to apply my brand to it. So that's where this, this can really help. Um, I've prepared my brand earlier, but let's say we wanted to pop on here and apply maybe this company's brand. As soon as you do it, it changes the look and feel of the course. So I've done that. So there you go, you've now got your Google branded e-learning content. And that's the power of the tool if you spend the time building it. And obviously if we go into here, um, what we've done is, we, as I mentioned earlier, instead of using custom code, we've, we've taken what would be 10,000 lines of CSS and put it into the product, so into a usable user interface. So I can change all the brand colors, the fonts, etc., upload my own graphics and loading GIFs, icons, and then go through to you know, the, the infinite um, items and things like that, the greens, the hover colors. So that's kind of how you can go with, with designing the course. So using Evolve, you can, you can apply that developer knowledge in terms of how to brand, how to style, but experience the quick course building as, as an ID and, and almost storyboard as you go, because I can now obviously go through and, and create multiple di uh, different parts of content. So I'm conscious we've got 10 minutes left. Any questions on that? Anything you'd like to see? Okay. So I keep going. Just in, in terms of the other um, issues that we're talking about, how do we review stuff? So if I wanted to review this, this, um, this course with somebody and share it out, um, how, how would we do that? What I can do is I can go in and add my comments in. And what that does is put these little boxes over here. So I can log in as a reviewer now and start hang, having a conversation. So I'll say, 
question is a little basic. So I've got that there. I can snap out to my comments and I can see here, question is a little basic, so I can say. And then on here, I can actually go and view that component, actually view where we are in the tool, so I can go to the question and start changing things. Or I can snap out here and um, look at my comments, actually type one back saying, well, no, it isn't basic. And when I do that, it goes straight back onto the, onto the content live. So that's the benefit of using a tool where you can, I guess, collaborate with the developer as they're doing it. You've got that power of Google Drive. So that's, that's where you kind of, it helps from projects, especially if you've got a lot of courses to review. So now I can go in and, and change that content and uh, resolve those comments as well. So what I'm gonna do is stop there because I did promise I wouldn't demo too much. Um, we're over on stand 28 if you've got any questions. But thanks very much. Sorry about the minor technical issues. Um, I'm Wes and uh, any questions I'll, I'll be here for, for the next few minutes. Thank you very much.